message in. If you don't type any messages in at all, I'm just going to expect that you're happy with what we're doing so far. Now, I'm actually going to delete what I just put in to the shell, and I'm now going to paste in that little script that I had before in my Google document. And I'm going to ask you now, um, so you imagine now you've got your partner next to you. You're going to look at what I've typed in to the editor. And we're not in the shell because we've no chevrons there. I've just pasted it in. I went to that Google document. I had it on the clipboard. I've just pasted it in to save a bit of typing. And you're now going to have a conversation with your partner. You've got about a minute. And what you're going to do with your partner is, I'm going to save this soon. And I'm going to execute it. And what I will tell you is it's going to execute it over here in the shell. Now, when it executes it in the shell, something's going to happen in the shell. We might see some output. It might ask for some input. Just tell your partner what you think is going to happen. What do you predict is going to happen? Now, clearly, you haven't got your partner sat next to you in the room. So we're going to use the chat. You might get it wrong, but these are the kind of things you're going to discuss. And, and people are typing things in. So you might just briefly write down three or four words, what you think might happen. And there might be some things that you don't quite get yet. So I'm going to read what David's. So David, I think he's going to say, hello, how old are you? And so David, you're, you're telling me precisely exactly what's going to be. You type in your age. Yep. It's OK. I'll forgive spelling mistakes, because I know you're trying to type it in quickly. And then, so it's, there's an output, then there's an input, then there's a bit of processing that goes on. It takes the person's age. It converts it to an integer. Why it's that? Why does it need to convert it to an integer? Then it, it then creates a new variable called next year age. And that new variable, it assigns the current age plus one to that new one and then says, so next year you will be. OK, so let, let, let's go and have a look at that. So I can't execute it because I haven't saved it. So I got to file and save as. So I'm going to call this age next year. Now, I may have done this before, and it might, compute, might remind me and tell me. Now, I'm using a Mac. Not everybody's got a Mac available. It knows to put .py on the end. But even so, I'm in the habit of making sure that everybody in my class types in .py extension at the end. It's really, really important. When you don't do it, you'll know why it's important to type it in. Um, it already exists. Yes, replace it, please. So I've saved it. Nothing's happened. Well, something's happened. Because look, it's now got, at the very top, it's got the file name and it's got the path of where it's saved. Why did it not execute it? And somebody's putting their hand up. They want to tell me, sir, you didn't tell it to run. You didn't tell it to execute. And I'll go, ah, so I've created a module and I didn't tell it to run the module. So I can go to run run module or i could just save a bit of time and press the function uh, the f5 function key so we go over to the shell and the shell says now how old are you so do i lie and tell it i'm 21 or do i tell it i'm 43 and I press enter ah, so it's calculated how old i am so let's go back and open the shell uh, sorry the shell don't know and there, what it's done is we've got a little program. Now, I kept saying earlier that what I really want you to do after tonight's session is I want you to go away and practice some of this. So it may be that the best thing you can do is to take that bit there, to get it to work on your computer, to practice it a few times. What, what about your age in 10 years' time? Okay. Or what about three years ago, how old you were? Or, you know keep making changes to it. Could you get it to say what year the person was born in? You know, if it knows what the current year is. There's lots of different things you can do with this. And that's one of the approaches I've taken with my classes. Said, okay, here's something that works. What about, how would you get it to say, um, to find out how many brothers and sisters somebody has? Or, you know, to find out what house number. So to take numbers and do things. Here's a question. Line three. Line three has a special significance. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something I haven't done before. I'm going to press the hash symbol. Oh, this is the wrong place. There's the hash symbol. The hash symbol is often used by um, used by developers to explain elements of their code to others. So, but also by doing that, what it's done is it's basically it's disabled that little section there I've highlighted. What do you predict might happen now if I go to execute the program? What do you predict might might happen? Will it work in exactly the same way? If so, why was that line there in the first place? What what's the significance of having that in there? And David David's really keen to demonstrate and flex his muscles and say, "Hey, look, I know what it is." Maybe I should play devil's advocate with David, but not tell him that I am. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But we don't we don't let on to David. We know what's going on. Okay, so. So, David, you said that age will no longer be an integer or defined as an integer. I'm not really sure you know what you're talking about, David. What are you talking about? And David sat next to me, he sat here in front of me in class and says, well, sir, um, didn't we do that thing last lesson where um, you typed in it like C was and you used quotes, so C was a string. And then when you tried to added to a number it couldn't do that because there were mixed data types and you told us sir that it didn't work because you can't do mathematical operations with different data types i'm saying i'm thinking gosh david you certainly know your stuff but i'm not going to tell that to him of course because i don't want him to be all big-headed and i don't want other children in the class to think oh here we go david's the brain bot in the class He's been on three, you know done three weeks of python course at teesside university and he thinks he's god's gift to programming I don't want that to happen in the class. So I might just say, I don't, David, I, I'm not really sure I remember what you're talking about. And others in the class might be thinking, it's giving them a chance to, as we're talking about it. And then somebody might say, this dark horse with the name of E1, puts his hand up and says, Sir, I think I read something somewhere that whenever you use the input function, no matter what you type in, it always returns the answer as a string, even if you type a number in. I'll go, whoa, Ewan, where did you get that answer from? And he might say, I've just seen it online. But um, do you know, Ewan, that makes some sense. In fact, and David goes, sir, that was what I meant. Oh, of course you did. Of course you did. So we'll have this discussion around it. And, um, well, we've got to test it out and see. But then I might say, you know what? Rather than me tell you what it is, you try it on your own computers. But it's got a bit of time. So um, if I press F5 now, what it will do is it will save it. It'll ask me how old I am. This time I'm going to lie. 21. So it should tell me I'm 22 next year. Press enter. Oh, no. Oh, it's not working. Oh, I hate computing. Sir, I didn't really want to do this option. I wanted to do... Um, what was that one where you got to make kittens? Yeah, I want to do textiles. I want to do like soft fluffy things. And you say, oh, hang on. Can't convert an integer to a... St oh, yeah, I've remembered what it is now. Or the person next to him goes, you need to convert a 